we have our discussion of the day today and I'm glad to be joined by members of the Jubilee Alliance this morning starting with Moses Kuria from TNA thank you very much thank you it's thank good you to have you in studio you. as well as Abdir Kadir Mohammed from UDF it is a pleasure to have you in studio today we're talking about the Jubilee Alliance and what you think it holds for the country should they carry the day March 4th 2013 all the questions you have you can send us to them you can send them to us rather by SMS that's on 8040 or tweet at Katie and Kenya you can also tweet me as well this is your opportunity to be able to sit here with these leaders and question them about everything you wanted to know about the Jubilee Alliance and what indeed their plans are for the country let's start with you Moses um, the principles and values yep. that are behind the, yep. t um, the Jubilee Alliance yeah uh, Yvonne uh, if you look at our constituent parties uh, principally TNA, UDF, ULP and now NAC uh, is that one consistent thread between our parties is the ideology of progressivism that we want to look forward that we know that as a country you've come uh, from you know sort of a troubled history but uh, what joins us is the belief that this country can only be moved forward when we, we be optimistic and, and look at uh, solutions for the years ahead we have achieved a lot as a country we have uh, we came from independence 50 years ago 49 years ago uh, we've, we've, we've seen ups and downs in terms of our economic growth, in terms of our political development. We came from a single party rule to a multi party rule. We came from a, you know initial multi party rule, which was a false start to a new constitution. And I think that those are wonderful achievements. But this country has to move forward, and the leaders and our parties and our peoples are joined by the belief that we cannot keep on looking at the back. We have to, we cannot sleep on our laurels. We have to look forward and ask ourselves how we're going to drive this country for the next 50 to 100 years. Okay, all right. Um, Abdi Kadir, of course, uh, the party UDF came in almost yeah. at the last minute when yeah. TNA and URP had already uh, come together. Yeah. Uh, what would you say was the main reason behind UDF joining the Jubilee Coalition and yeah. not any other? Good. Um, thank you very much and thank you for having me. Um, uh, just earlier, the question you, you asked about the values when and you said we, we came in right at the tail end of the process so by the time we we're coming in they had actually signed an agreement and and ours to, to see how to uh, graft the other agreement on top of the earlier one so we're looking at the at the values and the objectives of the of the coalition mm -hmm. and and i was part, personally very delightfully surprised i on that side we had nothing to add it's like uh, it was very well crafted the execution is a different matter whether we'll do it well or not but the documentation in terms of the values and objectives, because we were interested in that ourselves. We are a party that feels that is the reason why we were formed. Uh, any of us would have gone into any of the other parties, but the reason was we wanted to change something from as far as the politics was run, not from the point of view of just ethnicity or an individual leader, but to see whether you can have a party. And uh, that's why uh, 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 the values and objectives were very important for us. And when we looked at the agreement to see whether whatever issues we had were very much uh, present in the agreement. That side of the agreement, we left it intact because it had everything we were interested in, in terms of the values and the objectives. Very well put, very clearly put. How to now put those objectives in, in place is you have to be in, in, in power. In, for, for you as a political party to do anything, you must be in, in, in power. Okay. So that you can, one uh, British uh, parliamentarian said, one day in government is equivalent to five years in the opposition. You have to be, you have to be in government for, <laughs> you to be, for you to be doing something about okay. your policies. So it is to ensure that those policies, those values, those objectives are achieved and we move forward. Second is really the unity of the country. It's very critical that, look, we've got, we've got our basic infrastructure right. Uh, I was just telling Moses, two days ago the, state, uh, the Supreme Court handed in a very, very difficult decision, a very critical decision. Yet the country accepted, accepted it yeah. without a whimper. I yeah. mean, it, it, it just mm -hmm. tells you how things have changed. That those very weighty decisions have been left to the opinion. It's not even a decision. It's the opinion of the Supreme Court. It's and I believe yes. Milly Odhiambo had mentioned the same thing as well yes, yes. yesterday. She yes. said um, she doesn't agree with the ruling, yes. but that the power has been given oh, to the Supreme Court absolutely, judges. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so we, have, we have done quite a number of, of our basic infrastructure, right? Mm -hmm. We have got quite a number of the institutions, right? Or at least are getting them, right? Uh, the judiciary is one of them. Now for the executive and the legislature. 
the politics we haven't got right. Mm -hmm. Our political culture has so much to change. But it's important that we're, start, we're starting by at least coming with two or three key blocks as opposed to 50 different uh, uh, um, um, mini parties running around. Okay. The hope is that they have come together for, for value and, and objectives as, as opposed to that. It's very critical that we have come together also to seek power. But that is where the, the homework is. And if we can do that well, I think we're on the way. Okay. And I think uh, you mentioned an important point, and we'll get to that in the course of our discussion yeah. about the politics in this country yeah. and how much further we need yeah. to mature in that regard. Um, but we're just um, winding up now a coalition government. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the circumstances under which we got here um, are very different. But do you think Kenyans are ready for another coalition government, yeah. um, you know, bearing in mind what we've had? Yeah. Obviously, the circumstances are different, again, yeah. like I said, but how do you intend to work mm -hmm. together? You're different parties. Remember, you're not all merging as one party, mm -hmm. but you're different parties with different manifestos. Mm -hmm. Moses, how do you hope to work together should you form the government? You know, I like that question, Yvonne, because uh, there's one major distinction between the other coalition or the past coalition and the coalition that we are forming now. The, co the past coalition is the coalition of the unwilling. The, we were not willing to, to and circumstances which really forced us. The coalition that we're just about to form now is a coalition of the weary, whereby we say, by the way, you've got an option of going your way. Mm -hmm. You've got an option of joining another coalition. Mm -hmm. But you see, we have to sit together and say, do we have the chemistry, if I would call it so? Do we have a common uh, perspective and a common view about how to, to drive this country forward? Do we have a sort of uh, congruence of our manifestos and our policies? Once we do that, then we sign an agreement and it's not just a, a gentleman or a good ladies agreement, but a, a legal and a statutory agreement that is deposited with the, with the, with the competent and legal authorities. Um, I think we are living, this is the first dividend, the first true dividend of this constitution, is the fact that I am from TNA and Honorable Abdukad is from UDF, and somehow we have to, you know, to look for a way of, you know, merging our views and our perspective. So I think, I really uh, don't, I'm not a fan of, of the past coalition because, you know, a lot of things that would have happened, you know, uh, if you look at the ministries, this minister wants to do something, but they can't do because they think tomorrow that the other side of so-called partner right. is, is, is going to take advantage and start creating all, all sorts of noises. Mm -hmm. And what, what was the result? Maybe it could not have been very evident because uh, you know i think president kibaki was the overall stabilizer of that particular coalition but there was a lot of, a lot of uh, lacuna a lot of lethargy a lot of uh, you know uh, you know uh, coming short of doing what needs to be done mm -hmm. now this particular coalition is a, uh, that we are forming and hopefully the jubilee coalition is going to win you know the coming election and form government is that before even we form government the agenda is agreed what we are going to do day to day has, is, is going to be agreed the milestones and, and, and the particular, you know, you know, benchmarks for achievement that, that are going to drive the coalition forward and, and to, to drive the country forward are going to be agreed ab initio, as okay. our lawyers would say. Right. Um, let's get into the nomination processes mm. now and get into the technicalities of yeah. how that would work. Yeah. December 18th is the D-Day yeah. uh, for the Alliance. Yeah. Uh, many people are now calling it Super Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, you all have your different nomination processes yes. with the various constituent parties. Yes. How do you intend to merge that uh, yes. for s a Tuesday? Yes, uh, that's very true. And uh, uh, typically, the coalition would also have had a nomination process. Mm -hmm. But because of the, the nature of the negotiations, the last minute uh, yeah. uh, factor, that is being worked on now. Um, I sit on the committee that works on, on, on that process. And uh, up to the last minute, the issues were how do we go ahead and do it? Uh, we cannot use either of the, the parties' nomination rules because they are different. Some of them have uh, uh, college uh, uh, delegates. Some of them have uh, uh, universal suffrage of party members. I think the, the bottom line is that it has to be party members. It's not up to all or whatever. Mm -hmm. It has to be uh, an acceptable process. It has to be uh, a process that's legitimate as far as the Kenyans are concerned, mm -hmm. whether it's the delegates method, whether it is uh, a hybrid of some consensus and some delegates. Ultimately, it must meet the, the test of time for acceptance because um, uh, Kenyans these days don't just accept anything the leaders have said. It has to be bought by the, the grassroots. And ultimately, what we're looking for is to ensure that 
those who support these parties in, in many regions in this country mm -hmm. agree to whatever the, the, the outcome of, of that process is. Okay. Number two, that, that that process itself mm -hmm. gives energy to, to, to the efforts of the parties in terms of moving forward. So that if you move out a united uh, team, it makes it so much uh, more interesting and more uh, acceptable. The, the push because ultimately the, the, the eye must be on the ball. It is what happens on the 4th of March mm -hmm. that's really critical. Uh, what happens on the 18th of, of December mm -hmm. can either support our efforts for 4th of March or can derail them. So uh, the idea is how do you ensure that that work is done very well. And it's very delicate. It is, uh, 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 it's difficult it, because you really have to, to agree on uh, the top prize in the, in the coalition. But I think uh, one thing is given. Uh, the three parties, and specifically the three gentlemen who are interested in, in that, the first and the second spot, mm -hmm. did themselves agree that one of them would be the deputy and one of the, one of the other two would be the leader of the, the, the executive. Major, yes. The executive. Right. Um, to come to an earlier, without distracting from your current question, your, your earlier question on, on, on the coalition, power now is diffused. Power is diffused. The government is not just the executive. And because parliament is of necessity mm -hmm. uh, a place where you have to consult and, and, and a lot of negotiations have to take place. I think it is important that uh, we develop we develop this this uh, whole uh, culture of sitting, negotiating, and agreeing and, and, and right. moving forward. Because really, uh, it is not uh, do or die uh, uh, anymore. Mm -hmm. There is power at the, at the county level. So you might have one party running one county and a completely different party running the other county, or uh, uh, the two conditions. Uh, uh, running one one county, you know, uh, uh, one side has the executive of the county, the other side has the. Mm -hmm. If you look at the American system now, mm -hmm. uh, the Democrats have the White House, yes, but the opposition is running the, Congress. The House, the yes. opposition is running not not even a coalition partner, mm -hmm. but co the complete opposition Opposite, is uh, yes. is running the. the co so I think the Constitution forces us to ensure that we yeah. agree to to move forward as a country. Of course, you have to have power. Of course, if you can have power. Uh, through one coalition fully, it makes it far much easier to, to do these things. But uh, coming back to Super Tuesday, as you said, it is 14 days from the 4th, uh, 4th of December. Mm -hmm. That's why the 18th came up. Mm -hmm. Within those 14 days, we must come up with our, our presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. The negotiations for the, the process are almost finalized. Now the lawyers have been burning the midnight oil. And we are confident that at the end of that process, we will have a unified coalition in place. We will have a single presidential candidate in place and all of us will be uh, uh, pushing very hard to get uh, that gentleman. Okay. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that, um, we do know that uh, Honorable Mustalia Mudavadi and Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta will be battling it for the presidential yeah. ticket. Yeah. Is there anybody else who will be battling it out for the presidential ticket on the Jubilee Alliance? I, I think it's important to clarify some things and there was some misunderstanding that came from the press conference that was uh, heard by our respective party chairman mm -hmm. uh, some few days ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and the Honorable uh, Francis Ole Caparo made some statements which I, in my opinion were taken out of context by the media because uh, what we are saying is that at this point in time we have got three parties that have signed an agreement that is UDF, TNA and URP. Now URP, uh, the position in the top echelon of our coalition is is, is sort of set aside, that is of, of, of uh, Deputy President. Now between UDF and ourselves in TNA, uh, as my colleague has said, we are going to battle it out for the position of President uh, and whoever is not successful then uh, becomes leader of the majority. Now, uh, today is the 13th of December, mm -hmm. it's not the 18th of December. Right. Should anything change or should the principles and the parties in their wisdom you know, uh, decide to admit any other party. Mm -hmm. And we have been very consistent that our doors are open, that we're going to continue talking to others. Then at that point, and following the procedures and processes that are laid down within our coalition, we are going to, you know, to, to, to review that situation accordingly. Okay. For example, you know, uh -huh. if, if, if the Honorable Charity Ngiru, uh -huh. uh, whom, you know, in, in principle, you know, mm -hmm. she's, she's part of the Jubilee Coalition, decides to come on board, then at that point, the parties will sit down and they will make a decision accordingly. And I think that is very imminent. But at, at this point, 
that has not crystallized. Okay. That does not mean that we have locked our doors to anybody. Right. We are going to continue talking to like-minded people and like-minded parties because our idea and our objective is to drive this country okay. forward. So there is a possibility that we could see Charity Ngilu battling it out for the presidential ticket? Well, if it comes to that, it does not come to that, but if it comes to that, you know, the sun will still rise from the eastern <laughs> city. <of> the west. <laughs> it essentially I was, it essentially was, it was the politics and, 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 and the legal between lawyers and politicians essentially from the political point of view and really this is a political process mm -hmm. the coalition is very open and, and would love indeed to have uh, and, and uh, would be most grateful to have uh, Honorable Charity Ngulu on board from the legal side right now in paper we have that contract between the three parties okay so so, that's so she really has not signed on just for a lot of yes. opinions that are a bit confused yeah. because she came in at the last minute you see it was Let's be clear Jubilee yeah. Alliance you see, it was deposited on the 4th of yes. December. And on the 4th of December, when it was de deposited, there were three signatories to the, to the... That is... So from a lawyer's point of view, mm -hmm. it's fairly clear. Yeah. From a political point of view, and it's part of the agreement, actually, as many coalition partners as can come that share the values and objectives, mm -hmm. will be most happy. Uh, let me add something here. Right, Moses. The, the deadline of 4th of December should be understood this way. And I'm, you know, my friend is a lawyer, should collect me. Uh, after the deadline, what the law says in layman's language, and I'm, and I'm a complete layman in this matter, mm -hmm. is that don't come crying to the law. The law cannot protect you after the fourth. Mm -hmm. That does not mean that you are going to be hurt if you come after the fourth. Yeah? So it just says in a likely event that you are hurt within yes. your negotiation uh -huh. and you came in after the fourth, then you have got no records. Mm -hmm. That does not mean that because we, are, we share the same principles and the same values that you're going to hurt each other. Mm -hmm. It does not mean that if Charity Gill comes on board and we agree, uh, like a nice lady and good gentleman, that this is a way to go and this is how to participate in the nomination, we are going to do it based on our values, based on our shared principles. The only thing that she cannot do then is to go back to the records that is available within the law. Okay, mm. all right, okay. Um, that clarification is clear. Um, while we're still on Charity Ngilu, um, and I, we will try and see if we can get a clip of that one. We're doing our press review um, just a short while ago. Page five of the Daily Nation um, has an article quoting uh, Charity Ngilu saying that um, the alliance needs her more than she needs the alliance. And it goes on to say that she presents the clean face, and this is quoting from the Daily Nation as to what they said about her, that she's the clean face and provides legitimacy and brings on, you know, some sort of understanding um, that you are now an integrity, you know, you now bear some integrity. What's your take, yeah. uh, Mashimu Akadir, yeah. on, on her statements in that article? In well, the paper first, today? Yeah, I unfortunately haven't read the papers and I haven't seen her statements and I don't even know whether she made that. So the point is, we would be so much richer to have Honorable uh, Charity Ngilu on our side. I have worked with these people. I have worked with, with all the four of them. I, I had the opportunity of, of chairing the committee that they served on when we were doing the constitution. These are wonderful leaders who have, who have done a good job. Honorable Charity Ngilo stood as, as the presidential candidate, the first woman to stand as a presidential candidate. And mm -hmm. everybody on the progressive side of Kenyan politics, uh, from Nyang Nyongo to Kibuda Kibwana, all of us rooted for her to, to, to clinch that, mm -hmm. that. She has shown uh, enormous capacity to work from that time up to now and she has uh, done a wonderful job on the water docket uh, very many parts of this country if you go there the women in those areas uh, 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 love Charity Ngilo because she she's done quite a bit of work in terms of that sector so there's no doubt that uh, uh, the Honorable Charity Ngilo would make that ticket far much uh, uh, more um, attractive number two uh -huh. Uh, right now we have three men who came together. Having, having a lady uh, <laughs> uh, uh, come on board would, would make it far much more colorful and, and certainly the, uh, the Honorable Charity Ngilo is, is up to any task that, uh, that uh, the coalition would want to give us. Okay. Yeah. Let me add something here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Two things. One, uh, at the big hour, Charity Ngilo has always stood for this nation. That's what people forget. Some people try to ridicule that, but you remember in 2002, she really showed a lot of uh, patriotism. She showed a lot of, uh, you know, you know, a lot of humility, really. Uh, and that is how, how the NAC government, you know, came into place. Mm. The other thing is that uh, since uh, 2002, 
uh, Charity Giru has always read the politics of this country, right? Mm. A friend of mine <laughs> and, calls and her the <laughs> barometer of, of, okay. of, of the political so, temperatures of this country. Uh, so by her being in Jubilee, oh, it, it's yeah, in I, should seen, <laughs> I should have seen that would go into politics. But from what um, yes. the two of you gentlemen are saying here, yes. it seems like, you know, there's a lot of love between, uh, yes. you know, Jubilee Alliance and, of course, the new entrant, yes. uh, Charity Ngilu. Um, there's been this portrayal yeah. I think that we've seen that there's acrimony and there's you know no. a bit of misunderstanding no. um, you know is this the case because you're you're, you're giving out all these beautiful compliments yeah. here <laughs> this morning because it's the politics let me probably give a shot at it the reason was uh, this was done on the first this was done without a lot of the parties knowing what was going on especially the the higher level of the the politics most of our, uh, our key members of parliament might not have been fully briefed on how things were, were progressing. Uh, the negotiations have been going for some time mm -hmm. uh, uh, and obviously they hit uh, 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 bumps along the way and you know it was it was meandering it was moving it was really very fast and it was it was uncharted territory. So the nature of the announcement caught very many by surprise mm -hmm. and, and, and therefore the reaction and then the rumors and, and the, the, the rumors that this has happened and this has not happened. Finally, we have opponents and we have, uh, we have uh, uh, the media who are interested also in, in, a, in a blood uh, story. So all that put together is, is why we have, and we have not done a very good job at, at explaining ourselves and, and, and telling the people that clearly if these three gentlemen and the three parties were not interested in working together, they would not have been together. Okay. And nobody has forced nobody to be together at any time. Right. Number two, uh, everybody understands that it is in the interest of everyone to be together so that they, they move forward. What we have not been able to achieve is to be able to discuss that with our, our core constituents in sufficient uh, detail and insufficient uh, 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 manner to be able to bring everybody on board and that's what we're working very hard on number two there are uh, things that have not been concluded for example the nominations it's a very emotive issue uh, who will be the presidential candidate that is yet to be concluded a number of other uh, uh, details need to be worked out so all that put together plus where we are in terms of the time has uh, you know basically unfortunately shown us if we are not uh, uh, pushing in the same direction but i can assure you that everybody is interested in in the success of the coalition okay. and that uh, we're not punching each other all right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> absolutely all right yeah. thank you for that we carry on with our discussion we are speaking with members of the jubilee um, alliance that is moses korea from tna honorable Abdikadir Mohammed from UDF. I'm seeing your questions coming in. We have lots more to discuss. Um, there's the ICC issue, and we now want to field your questions uh, to them so that uh, you can have your opportunity to be able to ask your questions right here on Sunrise Live. And there's a lot of questions that are coming in, and I'm glad that we're actually tackling issues on the show today. Okay. Um, Let's just start with one quick one. I will rephrase the question a little bit. Do you agree now with the Honorable Raila when he at one point said this would be a two-horse race? Do you believe it's a two-horse race between Jubilee and Cord, Moses? It is a better two-horse race than the one Raila was envisaging or the one he was promoting. Because the one he was promoting was based on dividing the people of this country. The one that we have now, the two-horse race we have now, is not a creation of Raila Odinga, it's a creation of the constitution of Kenya. Okay, absolutely. Let's take another question here, um, and it's, talking, it's uh, addressed to you, Moshimiwa. Uh, it says, you are the chairman of the CIOC, mm -hmm. and let's remember that, um, implementing the constitution. The gender ruling uh, the yeah. other day by the Supreme Court, what were your thoughts on that, and uh, you know, how can we get to a point where uh, you know, implementing the constitution and making sure that you know, all of these measures are put in place? Well, thank you. And uh, I had a chat with the chief just yesterday, and we are not yet out of the woods in terms of that issue because it just gives us a, a breathing space for a couple of years. Uh, it's, it saved us in the sense that we we can go through the next elections knowing that the the House and the Senate will not be will not be declared uh, the National Assembly and the Senate will not be declared unconstitutional. But it also says that uh, uh, by 2015, uh, which is with, by 2013. 2015, 2015 yes. which is five years from the date of promulgation. Mm -hmm. We must have legislation in place to address that point. Bottom line, 
this is a very critical part of the constitution the the equity as far as gender is concerned is very critical it is it's part of the building blocks we have as far as the constitution is concerned now the court was understanding the difficulty in doing that but that does not give us the excuse to now go ahead and, and, and take a nap what we need to do is really critically look and see how that happens it has to be several layers uh, ultimately, it's not a legal issue. It's really a social, cultural issue. Indeed. Majority of the, the, the voters in this country are women. I was voted in majority by women. You see the lines. You see the people who take these things very seriously. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they don't vote in their sisters. Uh, and we also don't allow their sisters or give the opportunity to, to their sisters to, to run. So how do we change that? It's a cultural, educational thing. How do you ensure that that, that, gets, uh, uh, that mindset can be changed? Culture gets changed. Uh, uh, time was when women didn't wear trousers in this country. It's it's completely different culture, and and that has has happened in many other in many other uh, sectors. That's one. The second is how does the state, other than just nominating, ensure that we support uh, uh, women in in elective leadership posts? Mm -hmm. Financing is one. Political parties get financing from the state. Can we ensure that we tie that to to women participation to ensure that if you have more women in your in your in your roster? then you have more funding as far as that is concerned. Will Jubilee Alliance be doing something towards that for women in your alliance? If you look at, I told you earlier that I was very impressed with the, with the objectives and, and, and the gender issues are very high in the, in the objectives of the, I have no doubt, we have worked very hard in parliament and elsewhere to ensure that women get their fair share in, 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 in the national cake. But really it's a national project and we should, we should uh, but I was happy that the Supreme Court gave a, a ruling. I didn't. Uh, my town have agreed with it, but that it is it is accepted across the board immediately. Okay. Yeah. So, are you ruling out the possibility of this being implemented for the next election? It. No, I'm not ruling it out. But I'm saying that uh, the way the the decision has come down, it has postponed the the, the problem to 2015. Do you think we might just uh, get lethargic again, rest on our laurels, and say 2015 is far? We are Kenyans, known for our last minute. We 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 might. There's a very big risk, but we must not. We must not. And those of us, uh, wherever position we are, either in the media or elsewhere, must ensure that, uh, that uh, we hold our leadership the feet to the fire mm -hmm. in terms of, of that, so that gets concluded. All right. Mm -hmm. um, let's move to the ICC issue now. Mm -hmm. um, I do remember one member of the international press terming it as the coalition of the accused. Well, <laughs> what were your thoughts on that statement? I'll give you my thoughts shortly, but our views on the ICC now are shared within the coalition, so maybe I'll give yeah. my call okay. first. All right. Yeah. The, you see, this is an issue we have had as a country for quite a bit of time, uh, from the post-election violence up to now, and we have had very many attempts at addressing it, getting a, 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 a tribunal uh, locally, okay. yes. and we are where we are right now. As a country, how do we move forward? Mm -hmm. The push has been to bring this back to, to, to the country and sort it out ourselves. Point is, we have national uh, aspirations as far as the, as the country is concerned to ensure that we are a member of, of the international community. We have a sovereignty issues because of a country who, that's proud of, of, of its institutions. We have a number of our leaders and a number of other Kenyans uh, in the international court who are very much uh, cooperating with that court right now to move forward. That court has always had problems. There are very many countries that don't, the, the United States, for example, doesn't ratify to that. Not only does it not uh, uh, recognize, but it says if any of its member citizens are taken there, it will invade that court, actually militarily invade that court. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have an act of parliament from their parliament to that effect. So it's really a very politicized issue. But the point is we want to cross bridges when we reach those bridges. Okay, uh, so let's, sorry to cut you yeah. off, let's address this question here yeah. regarding the ICC. They say, should we have a case where any of the ICC suspects become yeah. president? Yeah. Uh, and we have trading partners yeah. who have, it is being said that yeah. they intend to impose economic sanctions on yeah. Kenya. Yeah. Um, what sort of government would that be like? How would you be able to deal with the situation yes, like that? Uh, yes, international law is, is, is practiced at, uh, at uh, it is self-interest every country looks at its interest they say uh, um, if for example one of our, our key leaders was to be elected and one or another country has an issue with it we sit with that country first of all regionally regionally mm -hmm. on the african setup mm -hmm. none of our african countries has any issues with any of these leaders none of them 
internationally there is no country that has come up and said I will impose sanctions on Kenya for A or B or C or D. But should that happen? How would you deal with the situation? Like on that? a case, on a case by case basis. First of all, I don't think it will happen. I don't see any reason why it should happen. I, uh, we are cooperating with the ICC. Even now we are cooperating with the ICC. Nothing different will happen. None of those countries has, has, has imposed any sanctions or anything on us right now. But more importantly, it is enlightened self-interest. International law is based on enlightened self-interest. Those countries have their interest, and they change the goalposts every other day. Uh, if you have uh, uh, Obama on your on your negative list today, tomorrow you have it because you have issues okay. with China. Those things change every other day. I understand what yeah. you're saying, Washimia, about yeah. it being enlightened self-interest. But yeah. be that as it may, Kenya yeah. did sign up yes. to oh, be a member of the ICC. Not, um, not only that. What would be the solution? Should we remove ourselves from the ICC? Because when you take a look at it, if the U.S. decided we will not be a part of the ICC, yeah. if any of our members go, we will invade yeah. uh, you know, the court at The Hague. Yeah. Um, that is a decision they made. However, this is a decision that we made as a country. We did. And not only as a country, we passed laws in this country mm -hmm. to say that we are part of the, the, the Rome process. Then we went ahead and pushed for a local tribunal. Those of us who are in parliament really pushed for a local tribunal so that we could handle these things on our side. Number three, why did that not succeed? Why did the local that time not succeed? Because there are two fears. One was that it, we didn't have the, the institutions in place and it would be a whitewash. That we would not have the judiciary in place, we would not have the prosecutorial process in place, it would be a whitewash. The other fear was that it would be a witch hunt, they, that yeah. the process would be used to target specific leaders. Okay. So those issues have been addressed as far as, as far as our judiciary is concerned. We have one of the most progressive judiciaries anywhere in the world right now with the, the chief justice and that team. So we're addressing those, those issues. Look, this is a very difficult issue for us as a country. Mm -hmm. The point is we should not politicize it so that we, we make political score out of it. Number three, we should not, we should not at all at all succumb to, to, to the self-interest of, of certain countries as we move forward in this process. Okay. But ultimately, this is a difficult issue for us to handle. Indeed. Moses, Let me add something. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, first of all, that is our collective view as a coalition, and that's shared within a Jubilee coalition. Now, uh, President Kibaki yesterday, uh, talked about 95 percent of our budget being financed locally, locally right, yeah right. so i think that's a v that's a staggering statistic that we should not forget even when uh, we listen to all this uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, makerel is coming from from some countries mm -hmm. the other thing is that kenya has made a deliberate choice about preferred trading partners about preferred economic partners our look east policy is mm -hmm. clear it's well documented it's well choreographed, and the president repeats it every time. Now, and I, I really do sympathize with our friends, especially for them from the West. Europe now is growing at, you know, between zero and, and, and two percent. Sure. It is near stagnation, mm -hmm. and they are they are hardly exporting every, anything to this country, except one thing, fear. They are exporting fear to this country. Okay. That's the only commodity they are exporting now. Convincing us that if you elect so and so, then we are going to impose economic sanctions. I do not. I don't think it's far-fetched for okay. some countries to, you know, you know, especially with the way we are discovering uh, natural resources. I don't think it's far-fetched for some countries to come here for economic aid. Okay, understood. There's a lot of Kenyans, perhaps, and, and we're getting that on our SMS line, who might be a little bit concerned about should we have a presidency where we have say Uhuru Kenyatta as president and uh, Honorable William Ruto as deputy president of this country. Um, there's the saying that they may have been banned from traveling to, to countries in the West. I know you've talked about our policy of looking to the West, but what do you say to Kenyans who say, okay, we're scared about having uh, two persons who have been indicted by uh, the ICC. We're scared about having uh, presidents who might draw economic sanctions on this country. What would you say to them to allay their fears? You morning? know, we saw the era of Edward Cray and vomiting on our shoes. And I think what they are doing now is they are vomiting on our shoes because, <laughs> you know, I, honestly speaking, I was supporting, uh, uh, what do you call the guy in America who was against Obama? Uh, Mitt Romney. Yeah, Mitt Romney. Mm -hmm. I was an ardent supporter of Mitt Romney. Oh, but you've just I, killed so many characters. Uh, yes, <laughs> you know that. <laughs> Obama was elected, but yes. now I have no choice because I'm not an American. Right. And I've got no choice, you know. Mm -hmm. So equally speaking, because we respected the choice of Americans to, to elect uh, Barack Obama, mm -hmm. can they respect our, my choice? my democratic right to elect a leader of my choice. 
Yeah. Okay. I, and I'm, I'm, I'm not in a hurry to, to suggest that we impose, you know, uh, travel sanctions or economic sanctions on Obama. Yeah. But <laughs> we, we <should> yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I supported uh -huh. President Obama very, yeah. very strongly, and uh, I'm glad he's, 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 he means quite a bit for quite a number of, of uh, people all over the world, not just in this country mm -hmm. and, and especially for this country. So in that sense, uh, <laughs> we don't have a coalition for this. I like <laughs> But I like that the coalition has yeah, the yeah, views. Yeah, yeah. But, no, no. but but you see, the, uh, uh, what you said is important. What you said is important, and these are critical issues for us to decide on. Uh, there is no doubt that that goes into the equation of, of, of taking that decision. Having said that, ultimately the decision on who is president of this country is taken by the people of Kenya. They are the ones through their vote that decide so and so will be will be president. That is why for those of us who are saying, for example, ha vetting in the in the in the political arena, mm -hmm. the constitution says for for elective offices, it is through and fair through a fair and and democratic uh, uh, free democratic election, and for appointed offices, it is through a selection process where vetting happens. Now the vetting for, for our leadership will be done by the people of Kenya. If the people of Kenya in their wisdom don't decide these are the right people, for whatever reason, yeah. then that's the, the, the popular sovereign speaking. Th that is the, decision, that is the, the voice of, of the people. If on the other hand the people of Kenya decide this is the, the issue, having taken all those issues in, 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 because that is in public domain now. What you have just said is in public domain now. Mm -hmm. How we take that decision? If we took that decision one way or the other, that is essentially the people saying, this is our view on this matter, and we move forward. If, if we were to have challenges thereafter, or even before, we will address them, we will address them like a responsible, uh, modern state should. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, we have about uh, three minutes to wind up our discussion today. Um, Moses, we can start with your final comments on uh, the plans for the Jubilee Coalition for this country should you carry the day. And also, one other critical issue, IABC is complaining about the low voter turnout. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are saying, um, I, I believe we had this as our question of the day on Monday. And people said, look, you know what, there's been this political rhetoric and all these people are just walking around and they're saying things and we don't seem to think that there's going to be anything worth voting for. Okay. Um, what's your message to the voters and those who have not registered to vote? And what's your message about the coalition and what it brings to the table? Uh, let me start with the issue of the uh, coalition and, and the promise for this country. You know, one of the things that really excites me is that when I look at the architecture of our coalition, uh, if you look at URP and, and, and the areas that URP is strong, if you look at TNA and the areas that TNA is strong, if you look at UDF, if you look at NAC and our, our respective constituencies, that in word and in deed, we are uniting this country. Mm -hmm. And that's a major dividend that you're going to have that all this, uh, you know, sorry for the language, nonsense of every five years, you know, you know, Kenyans rise up against Kenyans is history. And I think that is courtesy of the Jubilee Coalition because we have dared where the devil is not there. We have tackled, you know, some of the deeply rooted, you know, assumptions head on and said, no, wait a minute, for example, um, uh, some of the TNA constituents and some of the ULP constituencies historically have had, you know, problems, you know, during voting times. And we are saying, look, we are, it's not about us; it's about the future of this country and the future of these children. So, at, the, at least, unity and peace is one of the first dividends that you can expect from from the Jubilee Coalition. Then, the whole issue of economic empowerment. I think Kibaki has given us a good infrastructure a good foundation for which you can drive this country forward because nobody is going to come and claim that he's doing a good job by building roads i mean <laughs> they have been built you know in every you know every village in this country nobody is going to you know to come and say that they can take credit for free education so what is remaining to be done is only empowering people and putting more money into their pockets and finally uh, in terms of security you know is a major issue for this country so you know because we are going to be less engaged in noise making because you have one unified coherent government mm -hmm. you can expect us to you know exert all our energies into security one of the major causes of insecurity in this country is because as politicians we are engaged in so many side shows and because now uh, we are going to have one unified strong government you know we are not going to have all those side shows and we're going to put all our energy on, uh, on on security now when it comes to uh, the issue of voter legislation is a major concern very, very major concern. 
some of the areas, you know, especially you know, in northeastern mm -hmm. province, you know, recording mm -hmm. up to 16 to 20 percent of uh, you know voters that should be registered, uh, and we are going flat out, especially in this uh, last few days. You know, our aspirants, our members of parliament, our our leaders, our you know religious you know organisations, we are really mobilising all of them to ensure that. The, the, the target of uh, 18 million voters is achieved by the IABC. And, but equally, I would want to, to tell uh, all Kenyans that uh, you know, they are just about to vote for leaders that they don't want. Mm -hmm. And how to do that <coughs> is by failing to register as voters. Okay. And, and ultimately, I think IABC should do more in terms of sensitization. Mm -hmm. We should do a last minute push. And I think it's, it's, it's doable if we all work together in okay. this regard. Moshimura, just in about a minute, should the voter registration exercise be extended, as most Kenyans are hoping will happen? First of all, I think we'll, we'll do a little bit more than the 12 million. I think uh, 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 the figures are a little better than, than announced. In, uh, that's my, my feel. Mm -hmm. And two, I also don't think there is, uh, there is voter apathy in, in the sense of uh, I am not interested in the pro political process. Kenyans are very engaged. They in are. The, yeah, yeah. I they mean, there are discussions engaged. everywhere, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, in the streets. Yes. yes, yes. We had the same issues about the referendum before the, the constitution, whether Kenyans would, would come out. And, and therefore, I am confident that we'll have sufficient numbers on the voting roll and that Kenyans are engaged in, in, in the... In the in, in that process. So I, I, I'm not too worried about that side. Uh, we should push really as many of us to, to vote. The time is very short. Typically, we would have had several uh, uh, months to register. Now we have it only one month. Whether we'll extend, I doubt, because the wiggle room is very, very tight. Now we are within the 90 days before the elections, 45 days before mm. the end. The voter, you know, there has to be a nomination process. Yes. Fif we are going to shorten next week. We're going to shorten the inspection period from 30 days to 15 days because of the fact that there is not no time anyway. So very unlikely. If you have not registered, please go ahead and register uh, 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 now. We have seven or six days remaining, mm -hmm. and that's sufficient time. It just takes four minutes for you to, to, to register. If you want to travel, it takes you a day maximum, two, to reach your destination. Mm -hmm. So there's really no excuse for you not, not to register. But I, I'm, 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 I'm confident that uh, Kenya is sufficiently engaged. Finally, mm -hmm. this is a litmus test for our con new constitution. This is the most critical test after the constitution. If we handle this well, if we handle this well and, and cross over that bridge, then I think we have, we have uh, clearly uh, stepped on the, on the takeoff for, for as a country. Finally, let me just point out something that Moses said. It is uh, one of the dividends of the, the especially the, the Ruto Uhuru uh, uh, coalition, is that we are discussing things we should have discussed five years ago really integration issues, very deep-seated issues that we should have discussed five years ago. And by the mere fact of opening that window, mm -hmm. having that discussion, I think that is a benefit that we can all be happy uh, about as far as, as, as the coalition is concerned. Okay, all yeah. right. Thank you both gentlemen for your time this right. morning. Um, of course, so much feedback coming in. We can't obviously have gone through each and every mm. SMS that came in, but I don't think we've given uh, Kenyans the opportunity to understand uh, who you are and what it is um, that you stand for. Um, and we hope to see you Super Tuesday and to see what that looks like, of course. Um, we thank our guests this morning. We have been speaking to members of the Jubilee Coalition. We've been speaking to most Moses Korea from TNA and Honorable Abdikadir Mohammed from UDF discussing what their plans are for the country and of course discussing some of your critical questions. Thank you very much for your feedback. Remember to keep it coming. We're asking about Kibaki's legacy on the show today, what you think that is. So keep your SMSs coming in. We're getting quite a number of those. You can also send in your comments on Twitter. What is his legacy as he looks towards retiring? Keep your comments coming in. You are watching Sunrise Live. We come back shortly.